Confessions of an ex-people pleaser. But first, what's up, beautiful people? This is your favorite cousin, Rich. I hope y'all having a pleasant day. Now, let's get to it. Confessions of an ex-people pleaser. I'm pretty sure a lot of us chosen ones and empaths have been a people pleaser at one point in time of our life. Um, why? A lot of the reasons why I'm going to discuss in this video. Is it a thing of we don't love ourselves or we love people more than us? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. A lot of times it's our empathy that gets to us and we don't have certain boundaries put up and we tend to overgive or we tend to seek validation or sometimes it's hard for us to say no, you know. But in this video, I'm going to detail as an ex-people pleaser how I define people pleasing versus just generally being kind because I noticed that was something when I got over my ple people pleasing stage, I noticed, okay, I'm no longer people please or I no longer have that intention to people please. But what's the difference between this and me just generally being kind and being a good person? So that's what we're going to discuss in this video. Now, the first thing that I've noticed about being a people pleaser was that it is driven by validation, driven by validation. People pleasers often seek approval and avoid conflict to feel accepted or valued. Like I said, we've all been people pleasers, so I'm not ashamed of my past or anything of that sort. But yes, there was a point in time where I was seeking validation from outside, from people outside of me, you know, because I didn't feel I was good enough or I didn't feel that I was up to par in whatever thing that I was doing. So I would tend to people please those around me in order to seek their validation if I was good enough or if I wasn't good enough. And the dangerous thing about this is that when you're seeking validation from others, number one, you're always dependent on the validation if you're doing good or if you're doing bad or if something that, you know, is up to par or not up to par. You know, their validation is in their hands where it needs to be in your hands. And the second part about this being so dangerous is that sometimes these people that we're seeking validation from might not even like us. So why are we seeking validation from people that might not like us? So this forced me to seek validation from myself. And once I started seeking validation for myself and I validated myself and I knew if I was good enough or not good enough or something needed to be better or, you know, if something was up to par or whatever the case may be, I didn't seek validation from these people anymore. And that put that gave the power back to me. And that allowed me to start that allowed me to stop, um, you know, people pleasing those around me. Did I lose people that I thought were friends or, co, um, you know, or did I lose certain relationships with people? Of course. Why? Because those people, I guess, were in my life because they saw that I needed that validation. So it gave them power. But once I took that power back, like I said, they no longer see a reason to be in my life. Now, not everybody that I saw validation from was had ill intentions. No, some people that I saw validation from was because I looked up to them, were good friends or family members or, you know, uh, great influences. And do I still have those people in my life? Yes. But do I seek validation from those people? No. Now as an empath and a highly intuitive person, I have a difficult problem or had a difficult problem, I would say, saying no to people. I hated turning people down, especially if I had it or if I didn't have it. I just had a problem telling people no. I could see and I could feel, you know, how deeply this person may have needed that yes. And I would tend to people please by saying yes, in order for them not to feel that emotion. And at the end of the day, guess who was taking on that emotion? Because it had to go somewhere. Now, I would take on that mo emotion. You know, the same bad feeling that they would have if you would t deny somebody money or deny somebody a ride or den deny somebody anybody, that negative emotion would flee. But guess who was receptive of it now? Moi. Difficulty saying no. They struggle to set boundaries and might agree to things they don't want, which can lead to resentment or burnout. As I continue down my spiritual and self-improvement journey, learning to tell people no has been one of the most beneficial things. The main reason is, as you continuously tell people yes, they tend to start taking you for granted. Especially if these people weren't in your life for beneficial or they weren't in your life because they really liked you or really cared for you. They were just in there for the benefits. Once you start telling these people no, the people who were fake or were in there for the benefits tend to leave. And the people who were not here for the benefits, who genuinely care about you, will stay. You know, granted, you may have to start telling them no as well but like i said now your yeses are much more powerful and they will respect you even more how many times have you given your last you know your last dollar 
your last twenty dollars, your last fifty dollars, or you know, as they say, the shirt off your back to somebody because you really cared about them, you know. But you really needed it for yourself. Self neglect. They may sacrifice their own needs and well being to accommodate others and often at their own expense. Honestly, I think this is probably one of the worst things about being a people pleaser. It's where you neglect yourself. You know, you're giving to other people, you're giving to other situations, and now you lose out on yourself. You know, you stay up all night to help somebody else, now you lose out on sleep. Or you give your last of your ends to somebody, now you don't have money for your bills, you know? Or you let somebody in your house, and now they're eating up all your food. You know, <laughs> so a lot of times in order to stop this, we have to take care of ourselves first. We have to put ourselves first. And I think that's the, one of the biggest things about being a people pleaser is that we don't put ourselves first. So once you start putting yourself first, you don't neglect yourself. You know, it's like being selfish. First, you have to be selfish in order to help others. And being a people pleaser, you're not being selfish. You're helping others in hopes that you have enough to help yourself. You know, you got to fill your cup up before you can help others fill their cup up. Let them have the stuff that runs over after you finish filling up your cup. Now, turning the tables from being a people pleaser to generally being kind, the first thing is authentic generosity. You know, this generally being you, generally being a kind and nice person. And you're not doing it because you're seeking validation from somebody or you're seeking respect or seeking anything in reciprocity. You're just generally doing it out the kindness of your heart, you know, because you want somebody to smile. And this is after your cup is full, you know, you're just generally doing it because this is who you are. You're not seeking anything in return, you know, you're not even looking for a thank you. You're just doing it because this is who you generally are in the bottom of your heart, because you want somebody to smile. You want somebody to be happy. You want somebody to be well off. You want somebody to be better after you left them than when you first met them. Authentic generosity. True kindness stems from compassion and desire to help others without expecting anything in return. Like I said before in the past, I would go out my way as a people pleaser in order to gain something in return. Not all the times that I would go out my way. Sometimes it would be genuinely because I was kind. But the times that I would go out my way being a people pleaser, I was seeking something in return. It would either be validation, respect, or, you know, some kind of gratitude, something, some kind of reciprocation, something. And I had to stop that. And once I stopped that, that's when the people pleasing majority stopped, you know. Now, once I do it, it's out of the kindness of my heart, 100%. You know, it's no longer seeking validation, no longer seeking respect, no longer, no. It's just generally, if I'm going out my way to help you, if I'm going out my way, it's because I'm kind and that's the type of person I am. Not because I need anything from you, not even a thank you or appreciation. Now, it is appreciated if someone tells you thank you and, you know, if somebody is reciprocal, you know, as far as gratitude, but it is not necessary. That's not why I'm doing it. Now that you're not seeking outside validation from others, and you have enough self-love for yourself that you are not seeking love from any other outside source, you now have healthy boundaries. And these healthy boundaries allow you to say no. These are the healthy boundaries allow you to be kind and not a people pleaser. Healthy boundaries. Kind people help when they can, but are comfortable saying no if they need to. Understanding that self-care is also a priority. Having healthy boundaries forces those around you to either be with you because they genuinely care about you, or the people who are just using you now have to go find another source to siphon energy from. You see, siphon resources from. Why? Because now they know that you have these healthy boundaries. Now they know that you're not scared to say no whenever it doesn't fit you to say yes. To be completely honest, when you're a people pleaser and others know that you're a people pleaser, they tend to lose respect for you. They see you as a pushover. They see they can get anything out of you. They see that self-love that's missing. They see that validation that you're seeking and they abuse this now genuine people people who genuinely care about you they don't abuse it or they don't take advantage of you but those who have ill intentions they would definitely abuse it they would definitely take advantage of you because they know you're seeking something they know that you lack something instead of helping you they tend to hurt you take away from you and not gain or reciprocate something back to you self-respect they recognize their own worth and understanding that kindness includes treating themselves well not just others once I started treating myself the way I wanted others to treat me, this was the final step I needed to close the chapter of seeking validation, seeking approval, seeking love, seeking respect, ultimately being a people pleaser. Why? Because I was complete. I was whole. And anything that I did after that was because I genuinely wanted to and not because I needed to because I was seeking something. All in all, being a people pleaser is just an imbalance of being overly empathetic and not having enough self-worth. 
I hope this video helps somebody today. This is your favorite cousin. Y'all be safe. Love and blessings.